Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has called the liberation of the city of Kherson the beginning of the end of the war. He said that today during a surprise visit to the city. Kherson was recaptured by Ukrainian forces on Friday after Russian troops withdrew to the other side of the Dnipro River. The city was the only provincial capital to fall to Russia. It had been under occupation for eight months. Russia annexed Kherson and the surrounding area in a sham referendum back in September. Now, speaking in the city of Kherson today, Zelensky said that Ukraine will continue to win back territory occupied by Russia. You see our strong army. We are step by step coming uh, to, our, to our country, to all the temporary occupied territories. And uh, of course, it's, it's a pity, but it's a long way difficult way because this this war to the best heroes of our country and so but but for us it's very understandable we don't believe russia yes and uh, they are tricking with all the world that's why we are going forward we're ready for peace but our peace for our country that was ukrainian president Zelensky there our correspondent in ukraine Nick Connolly. He spent the day in the city of Kherson. He joins me now. Nick, you just returned from Kherson. How safe would you say is the city tonight? Well, it definitely doesn't feel particularly safe. If you're coming from outside, you constantly hear very loud bangs. Some of those are mines being blown up, but also some of that is very definitely Russian artillery coming from the other side of the Dnipro River. The entirety of Kherson is basically, you know, available to Russian fire. There is nowhere that is safe, even from pretty short-range weapon systems. Uh, but when you walk around the streets and you talk to people, they barely look up when they hear those bangs. You see the kind of the outsiders, the journalists, the politicians coming from Kiev today, all kind of looking nervously at the sky, and the locals are just glued to their phones, hoping for a bit of mobile phone uh, signal to contact the outside world, to hear how their families are doing, to catch up on news. And they are now totally inured to it, you know, eight months after the occupation began. And most people there say that, you know, even if the Russians are on the other side of the river, they don't believe that the Russians can hold their positions there and they're convinced the Ukrainian army will send them packing within a few weeks. We know that Ukraine's President Zelensky said today that he, and I'm quoting here, he's ready for peace are we closer to peace now compared to where we were a week ago? I think it's this question of interpretation. I think he definitely means peace on Ukraine's terms, at Ukraine's terms, peace achieved on the battlefield by pushing Russia back to at least where it was at the beginning of this war in late February, or at best getting Russia out of Crimea, out of Donbass. I think the outside world has kind of very greedily kind of, you know, <laughs> jumped on that statement in the hope that that means some kind of willingness to cut a deal with Russia that would end this and see energy prices dropping around the world, see food prices dropping, and basically, you know, a deal where Ukraine would basically do the world a favor by accepting some kind of face-saving solution for Vladimir Putin. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think that's not going to happen because Ukrainians just aren't going to accept it. After all those deaths on the battlefield, all the civilian deaths, mm -hmm. there is just no appetite here yet for that kind of deal that would see Russia winning some kind of, you know, some kind of small gains from this war at all. You mentioned civilian deaths. Um, evidence of war crimes is again emerging, this time in the city of Kherson. Considering what you have seen in other places, and I'm thinking of the town of Bucha, for example, um, where does this leave hopes of finding a lasting peace? I think definitely these kind of uh, human rights abuses do mean that relations between Ukraine and Russia are going to be poisoned for decades, if not more, to come. That is kind of goes without saying. As for the situation in Kherson, I think it's still early days. On average, in the other places, it's taken a, a couple of days, a week before the kind of full extent of what happened became clear, before mass graves were found, before people came out with their stories. But even in the few hours we spent there on the square talking to people, we had several people talking about friends, relatives that had gone missing, that is just unaccounted for, that you know they think probably were taken away by the Russians for pro-Ukrainian beliefs, or people who maybe just you know lost their lives trying to get out trying to get ukrainian controlled territory so lots of gruesome discoveries definitely expected to come in the weeks and uh, months to come in Kherson. and you know nick you have been saying that um, russia is digging in 
for a defensive. I mean, that sounds like Russia is preparing for a very long winter. I mean, how or where do you think this war is likely heading? Well, that's uh, yeah, the question that, that uh, I would probably need a crystal ball to answer mm -hmm. with any kind of guarantee of accuracy. But definitely the Russians looked like they're trying to dig in. They want to kind of hold on to the left bank of the Dnipro River. They want to hold on to that land bridge to Crimea. But whether or not they'll be able to do that, I think, you know, right now they're on the back foot. The Ukrainians are getting more and more Western weapons and are using them pretty effectively. And so far the Russians haven't been able to kind of bring well-trained people to front lines. The mobilised troops that are ending up in Ukraine in the trenches are all... Uh, you you know, under-equipped and under-trained, so they're not really having any much of a kind of positive impact there. So for now, I think the Ukrainians are going to push home their advantage, and the Russians are hoping desperately that you know, Ukraine's Western backers will at some point pull the brake and tell Ukraine to kind of cut a deal for the sake of the wider world and you know, the kind of bigger economic uh, political tensions worldwide. DW correspondent Nick Connolly reporting tonight from Ukraine with the latest. Nick, thank you.